All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Lonesome Robots Aerospace Hoyo CSM mod, which is being made by forum user Silent Velcro. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to build an Apollo-inspired command and service module with all the trimmings and is in fact also a companion parts pack to the Hoyo Lander, which we did look at in the previous episode. And like with that Lander, this is definitely not meant to be a perfect one-to-one -one recreation of the Apollo mission parts, but rather an inspired by close approximation. And so with that in mind, let's jump into the VAB and have a gander at all the parts that this mod does add in. So let's grab a Mark 1-2 command pod for size comparison's sake, and then of course turn on our mod filters to only show lonesome robot parts. And we'll of course start by looking at the gargantuan Hoyo command module, which is a big one weighing in at 6.2 tons and can hold a maximum crew capacity of six Kerbals. That's um, twice as many as the actual Apollo missions, but you know what? It works. And yes, six Kerbals, a minimum of one, of course, and does have a built-in data transmitter, its own generator, which will produce a six electric charge per minute at using 0.6 monopropellant. It is also a lifting surface with 1.4 wing area, a uh, RCS built-in reaction wheel, the typical crew report, and of course a battery with 350 electric charge and a monopropellant tank with 50 on board, and is... Well, quite large, as you can see right here, but it is beautiful. And this part actually makes sense. I know it was one of my, I don't think it's a complaint, just an oddity on the uh, the lander from last episode that seemed too small. This one actually makes sense with the size, considering it holds six Kerbals, it is roughly twice the size of the Mark 1-2, which holds three. And so that, in my mind, is a good thing. Now, other than that, like with any other lonesome robot aerospace parts that we have looked at, this thing is beautifully made. Very good modeling, very good texturing. Now, of course, I'd prefer it to be a bit more stock alike, but that's just my weird little preference. But overall, it is still gorgeous. And I gotta say, I, I think all the shiny bits are growing on me. I used to not care for that too much, but I don't know, something about it, it, it makes me happy now. And overall is just, yes, a very well made part. Now let's uh, just start a new ship here, now that we have seen the size comparison between the two capsules, and just start with the Hoyo command module here. And we're gonna do like we did last episode with the lander and just kinda build this thing and put it together piece by piece. So where we're gonna start is the top, and even though it'd be Awful to cover up all these beautiful shiny parts, we're gonna have to, because of course a command module to come back to the planet safely is gonna need some parachutes, so we need the Hoyo CM parachutes here, which as you can see is three parts and just fits right in to those little alcoves there on the top, fit in quite nice and snugly, and there we are, we have our parachutes, whoop, wrong way, and the next part is the parachute cover, which then just goes right on top there to protect the parachutes, and as you'll see here, we now have this as a decoupler, which will pop off at just before you release the parachutes right there. Very good, uh, very nice. Now the next thing we'll need is, of course, the Hoyo docking port, which, fun thing about this one, it is also, of course, meant to be the same docking port you use with the Hoyo lander on the very top attachment node, though, of course, you could use any standard docking port that you desire. But uh, this one is quite nice looking, like with all the other parts. There we go, and of course doesn't obstruct our view of that shiny, shiny hatch there. Very nice indeed. Now, of course, for re-entering the atmosphere, we're gonna need something to protect the bottom of this thing, so down to thermal, and we'll need the Hoyo CM heat shield. Very nice little heat shield there with, of course, you know, plenty of uh, ablator to protect the thing, and a lifting surface of 1.5. Always good to have, and just overall, 
very nice looking. Now, of course, next we're going to be back in decouplers and use the Hoyo CM decoupler, which is what we'll use to then attach this baby to the rest of the ship down here, which of course means the service module itself. Now let's pop it up top here for a moment to just see all the nice detail on the interior of this thing. Very, very cool service module. Now it has a lot of electric charge at 400 and then also a whole, whole lot of monopropellant at 1,840. And that, well, that is just beautiful. Beautiful. And uh, yeah, very nice detailing to it. I love the interior bits. And of course, it is also shiny, which makes it better. And that attaches just right down there under the decoupler. And we're good to go. Now we can have a look at engines and take a look at the Ho Hoyo CSM engine, which is, of course, meant to go just right down here at the bottom. And it is, if I could actually get the. There we go. There's the rest of the stuff. The stats on this, it does have an alternator, which will produce one electric charge per second and a maximum thrust of 170 kilonewtons and, of course, does use purely just monopropellant at a rate of 10.7 per second. Very nice. No gimbling to it, but still, you should be able to control this thing quite nicely between the uh, RCS, etc. on here, which is always handy. Now, next thing we're going to need is, of course, in command and control, and that is some extra RCS ports. Now, of course, we have built-in RCS on the capsule, but we're going to need some down here on the service module, and that's actually going to need to be at the uh, four symmetry, and they go right here on these rectangles, as so uh, we can see all their placements. Very good. And then the next thing we're going to need is, well an antenna to call back home. So, communications, and we have the service module dish antenna, which I'm actually gonna have to be honest with you guys here, I don't know exactly where this is meant to be placed, but from images that I've seen, it kinda goes maybe there-ish, and then you extend it? No, that doesn't seem right. Because it needs to be sort of, uh, hmm. Yeah, like that, there we go, perfect. Good. There we are. So we have that antenna, which, of course, as I did just show, can extend and retract just however you need it to be. Though that seems a bit awkward going up against it. But, eh, oh well. It'll work. And we then also have some electrical generating devices in the form of some Hoyo solar panels, which are sort of meant to go in here-ish. And uh, I think if I turn them this way is how they'll go out correctly. Because if we extend them... Nope, did it the wrong way. There we go. Hold on. Hold on. There we are. Lovely. So they kind of go out at an angle like that, which is quite interesting. So you know, they'll be just sort of flat up and down like that when retracted, but then extended, sort of go out at an angle, which uh, is there, is nice though, and will produce 0.5 electric charge per second. Always good to have. Now, the next thing we have is in payload. Yes, here we are. And this is where we start running into the territory where it combines with the Hoyo lander, as this is the fairing that's meant to sort of keep the lander safe. And it just pops right there. Excellent. So that we still have the engine and all covered up there, but now we have space for the lander down below, which is quite nice. We have a large open area in here. And then in a coupling, we have the Hoyo lander fairing base, which of course is a decoupler so that you can detach it from the rest of your rocket and you just pop it there and that's where you build the lander off from. And then there you go. You can attach the rest of this thing to your rocket of whatever design you choose and launch it into space. But we're not quite done yet, and I'm suddenly forgetting where the next part is. Ah, it's an aerodynamics. There we are, lovely. We have the CM Aero Shell, which goes up top here. And I do like that, uh, notice we have this door looking thing here. It it actually does nothing. It's purely there for the aesthetic view. But of course, it, it is, you know, in the same spot as the door on the capsule. So it'd be basically, you know, use your imagination and that's how they loaded into the ship. And there we are. It just pops right on top there. 
And then for the final part, we go back to engines where we have the launch escape system, which goes right on top just in case things go wrong. We can decouple, launch this thing, and get a nice boost to safety. And it is, of course, a nice little powerful engine with a max thrust of 750 kilonewtons using solid fuel at a rate of 42.488 per second. It does also have some built-in RCS, some mono propellant at 20 and of course 160 solid fuel so it's not gonna last too long uh roughly about four seconds or so but a very nice launch escape system nonetheless and i believe that should be all the parts let me just double check here make sure i didn't miss anything and uh then we will move on to actually look at, the, at this thing in the real world so yes we had that and that's the parachutes yes we're good we did in fact make everything and here is it all put together prior to launch and again you just pop this onto whatever rocket you're looking to send out and have a good time and of course if you weren't using the lander you just you lose that and uh you know do this as per normal so let's leave and head to one of these that i have a pre constructed up in orbit so we can see how the things decouple and also of course look at the awesome interior on that command module it is pretty cool all right so here we go we have our full little thing here i'm actually gonna sort of mess around with these so let's decouple some stuff or some things here rather so we'll drop off this back end first and i like how this thing decouples because it doesn't just float backwards as one giant cylinder in fact if we release it it sort of floats back and also opens up to try and make life a little bit easier but of course <laughs> i had my uh antenna there sort of blocking it a little bit which is unfortunate so if that means well we can extend our poorly placed solar panels i still have no idea if that's exactly where they need to go or not but you know what i've put them there and they will be there and oh no you're already uh, there we go yeah we have our antenna lovely and yeah so the next part to decouple is of course this bit which i mean we're gonna fire off this before we launch it so let's actually add another <laughs> point here so you can actually see the burn of this thing and it is glorious let's actually turn off the ui and we're gonna burn the launch escape system first and then release the top arrow shell so it flies away so there we go and fire and away it goes <laughs> <laughs> it's like a missile going into deep space beautiful and it's already five kilometers away lovely lovely and so there we go we are left with just our command module and uh service or command pod and service module there we are so let's take a look at the interior very nice look on all of this. Of course, it does come pre-packaged with roster prop monitor and assets. So you can see that we have all these beautiful new things everywhere, which is quite nice. And the basic layout of this thing is that we have two pilot seats, this one here, and then of course the other right here. And then uh, besides these guys, we have four sort of, I guess, passengers down below. There we are. It's a little bit dark in here, but you know what? Still, we got a good view of everyone, so we have about two on each side, with lots of supplies packaged all over the place for, you know, whatever you need. And there we go, we've got the one, two, three, four. Ooh, boy, don't want to open that hatch, that, um, <laughs> out to space with them all. But yes, there we go, that is the beautiful, if, uh, quite dark interior, and, oh, hey, we can actually see the pilots up there. Nice, there we go. This is a very, very big capsule with the six people. And yeah, overall, very just cool little system. I love it. And if you do package it with the Hoyo Lander, you have a lovely set of parts to do your own Apollo-style mission. Or, of course, you could use these for whatever mission you desire, going anywhere you need in the solar system, which is always fun. Uh, but yeah, that is gonna be it for this episode. Not really much else to do except for fire off this last engine. There we go, our monopropellant-powered engine. 
And uh, yeah, so if you'd like to check out this mod for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description as usual. And I would definitely say to go check it out as this does have some pretty impressive looking parts. And uh, yeah, that is going to be it for today, though, folks. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.